Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I'm Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about Luke Cage, Season 1, Episode 11, it's called Now You're Mine, and full spoilers for the episode. Now it's funny how we spoke about the last two, kind of being like, slower episodes and like building things back up again, because this episode was full on, one big this, action sort of, like, scenario, you know? This is the first major action episode of the show. Yeah, that this was... This was entirely a heist, not a heist. I always say heist when I mean uh, hostage for some reason. I just whenever I think of something situation that's like this, I, my head always goes to heist first, and I don't know why. Because it's not a heist; they're not stealing anything. But so we have stealing this, lives. Yeah, they're stealing lives. So last episode I did with Luke Cage, you know, how Mister gets shot. Luke was protecting her. They're in the bar. Very quickly, he gets her down into this uh, secret basement area. That sort of it's an old building with these uh, prohibition sort of uh, you know hiding places hiding places for you know back back when the you know all the booze had to be to be kept out of sight, but and very quickly it becomes the police are outside and it turns into a it's not quite die hard esque but it's you know that kind of it's not a million miles away either is it no I feel like for it to be more die hard esque there has to be more of Luke like sneaking around and taking people out. We did get some of that though. Ah, towards the end, sure, but it was more. It was more with Misty most of the time, mm. dealing with her arm. That's uh, her artery was cut, and uh, it was a very action-packed episode in that sense because with a lot of, a lot of playing with that intention and diamond back, uh, telling the uh, the councilman to say it was Luke Cage who was doing this and that he was the one that had them hostage, and you know the inspector outside dealing with the situation. It was all very, you know. Uh, big set piece kind of episode, which I enjoy. It was great. It was great to get this after a couple of episodes of build up, where it was a lot of conflicts coming together. Not that we didn't get anything else. There was lots of cool little character moments throughout, and there was some stuff with Diamondback specifically, where he went into more of his backstory and just why he hates Luke so much. This episode also cemented the fact that Shades is by far my favorite character. <laughs> he is the only logical one in the entire building. He is pretty logical. He was talking a lot of sense. I mean, from a criminal perspective, but he was talking a lot of sense. Yeah, he was like, come on, like, get get a goddamn plan, man. Yeah. No, sort, sort this out. Yeah. I enjoyed uh, Claire and Misty bonding a little bit uh, mm. when she's, like, patching up and sort of apologise and uh, they have a little joke about look and coffee and, you know, all, all that. And I also, I, I appreciated the, the callback to the last episode's joke about Luke being corny. And yeah, Claire thinks she's corny because he, he'll just you know, uh, be careful. He's like, always, you know. Yeah. Uh, so now I, I enjoyed that. It was lots of fun little beats like that, and of course Luke does. This is kind of even though he's been heroic throughout. Don't get me wrong. This is him properly being heroic. Like he knows he's going to get caught, but he has to run and save, you know, the girl yeah. anyway. He has to. This is save the hostages. Again, to go back to the the westerns, this is the the, the saloon fight. Yeah. Yeah, it very much is. And, you know, the fact that all the hostages all came out saying, no, no, Luke was protecting us. They were shooting at Luke, you know. And obviously it's kind of weird having this two episodes before the end. We've got two episodes left and presumably, you know, we're, we're going to get, you know, somehow his name will be cleared. And it wouldn't even surprise me if we get in a situation where Diamondback's doing something awful somewhere and they need Cage's help to take care of it. Yeah, because obviously he gets away. Yeah, and it's interesting. Cause it was uh, which one was it that helped him out again? Zip. Yeah, might have been Zip. He was like, "Oh yeah, you want to come out? Yeah, this way." Like, Why didn't you mention that like two hours ago? Where have you been? <laughs> he's hiding, he's staying out of trouble. <laughs> yeah. he, doesn't, he doesn't want to get shot. <laughs> but but when when Shade was going around, going, "Look, we need a way out," and like you know, what we're we gonna do? Why didn't he go? Yo, that way. Well, I'm assuming that's like the uh, the prohibition area in the basement. Like, I I think that this was something that Cottonmouth knew about, mm. but it wasn't necessarily standard knowledge to everyone who worked there, or you know whatever. Yeah, because I, yeah, I don't because I don't think there was like a handle on his side of that door. I think that was designed mm. to look like just a part of the wall. That's true. Uh, that'd be my guess anyway. I mean, I, I might just be filling in blanks for them, but that's what it seemed like. No, that's fair enough. Uh, but no, uh, we. we yeah, so like I said, I also have as much to say about this because it was so straightforward. You know, just good old fashioned 
super heroics. Super heroics. Which is but... it's kind of the first time in the show that that's done it, really. Yeah, there's that. There's him like stepping in and doing all that stuff. But even just like the the hostage situation, like cutting outside to the police and them trying to assess the situation. And there's always the hothead who's like, "No, we're going in right now." He's like, "No, no, you're not. You're staying out here." Also, Frank Castle mentioned they mentioned the uh, Punisher's. Yeah, they're really like. I feel like uh, uh, between the last season of Daredevil and, and Jessica Jones, there was a couple of references to each other, but not that much. Well, I think it makes sense that we're getting more as we go, because the whole idea is that the whole thing's escalating. And by the time yeah. we get to Luke Cage, they've already heard of the devil in Hell's Kitchen. They've already heard of this woman and the guy who can uh, control minds. You know, like... Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, it's, there's a lot of references in this and, one. And it's funny how it almost takes the... Because we talked, spoke in the last episode about how you know they were playing on the, the the fear that a lot of cops have for black people, and that's how they're going to turn that into them selling guns to them. It's almost you know superheroes in general, especially when you look at something like X Men, but it stands here as well, where it's a metaphor for discrimination and things like that. Whether it be racial, whether it be you know uh, homosexuality, you know, or whatever, like you know whatever. Yeah cut off that someone puts on society that's you know of that nature and it's funny to me that it's almost shifting from that to the same thing but for powered people like they're almost overlapping into it and then when we get to because obviously they're scared of jessica jones as much as they're scared of him but it's not because of race it's because there's this new category it's like it's not white or black anymore it's normal in Enhanced. You know, enhanced uh, meta, to use a DC word. Yeah. You know? It is interesting, though, because obviously, to go back to the X-Men analogy, that is was always a, a, a racial metaphor, right? R- racial, I'd say gay just as much as well. Cause it, well I think, it, all right, when it started off, it was it was more racial. I think. Probably, yeah, maybe when it started off. But I feel like it's, it's, it's kind of a thing for any type of minority that feels, yeah. you know. But now, like, this obviously is playing so heavily with the racial stuff that the metaphor as well feels maybe overdone it's like it's like double the point see i don't necessarily feel like it is doubling the point i feel like it's i i think it's pointing out there's like a natural transition to it that Mm. you know it's kind of going back to the whole watchman thing right where the only thing that would unite everyone on the planet is if there was an outside force that was then different from everyone you know because i I always this is a really depressing conversation but one of the saddest parts of humanity is that you know if you have like one town and another that are near each other, they'll have a rivalry. But as soon as the neighbour country comes involved, it's then that country as a whole versus that country. But as soon as another outside force, like say, uh, you know, whether it's you know another continent or that could be more specific, say terrorists, you know, that's like an obvious one. But you know, it becomes about oh, this is our continent versus that continent. You know, and it becomes and then it yeah, gets and bigger, then, and it's like you're at a point where it's like the whole of the West. Yeah, it's the whole of the West versus the whole of, you know, the Middle East. And, you know, like yeah. it, it keeps escalating like that. And it's the same thing with race almost to an extent where it's, oh, it's white, black, you know, Asian, Hispanic, you know, all split up. But then there's times when, well, one is clearly seen as worse, so the other ones team up or whatever. And this is kind of that idea where now we have these superhumans, like this mm. is now what we're scared of. So now, oh, may- maybe... Like it always should have been, skin colour's not that big a deal because it's just goddamn colour. It's cosmetic, yeah. you know. It's it shouldn't mean anything, but of course it does because people are stupid and evil and whatever else. But uh, so no, I think that's what that is. I think it's transitioning naturally into that because it's where things would go. It's like people would. I'm not saying people would forget about actual racial problems and disputes and you know prejudice. But it would seem less important. But it would seem less important now that there's this new threat, that, you know, perceived threat. There wouldn't necessarily be a threat because, especially with Luke and Jessica, we know they're not villains. We know they're, but people would have that perception. Yeah, at least with that, there's some actual justification because they are actually physically different. Like it's not oh, just yeah, yeah, because yeah. Meg. There is actually a. Yeah, they they thing. could if they wanted to completely just like Destroy rampage everything. and yeah. like control people and if they wanted to, and obviously that is scary. But that then then becomes the same argument as you know why, what stops them from doing that? Well, what stops any regular person from shooting someone else in the head? Oh, you that's know? true. It's it's about just being a good person and trusting them. Um, 
But yeah, that, that's why it's an exaggerated. That's why it's a metaphor because it takes it to an even bigger yeah. level. But yeah. I did like, on that note, I liked how they talked about obviously the police getting the bullets and stuff, and they they mentioned uh, once they once the police get it, it's not long till everyone else gets it. Yeah, and that's why he wants to stop it. He thinks this is, this is terrible. We shouldn't ever have to. If anyone sees us using these, they'll want them, and then it it spreads. Yeah, and then it's it's just a, it's an arms race essentially. Yeah, it becomes an arms race. Yeah. It's yeah. almost it's, to, quote, to quote a very a, another superhero story. End of Batman begins. Escalation. You start wearing a mask and. Uh, armor, they buy armor piercing round. You know, it's escalates. Yeah. Everything escalates. So, uh, no, I was playing with a lot of that. So, in a, in a way, this was probably the most typical episode that the show's had. But at the same time, it was also one of the most entertaining because it was yeah. it was done well. It was the first episode in a long time where I actually felt, ah, oh, I know where this is going. Yeah, and I you love know, the whole thing. And obviously, Claire finds out that uh, you know the the waitress uh, was paid to you know frame mm-hmm. Luke. Misty's now in full belief she has more information and she fully believes it looks innocent. Uh, so I can see the next episode very much being the the debate for Luke's innocence. Um, yeah, and then the final one, the showdown. The showdown of sorts. Of course, the show surprises multiple times, so it wouldn't surprise me if they surprise us. To, yeah. you know. I want to give a specific shout-out to the music in this episode. The mm. scene where um, Diamondback is giving the, the monologue of his backstory mm. you know, to the to the councilman. And then that's where it's it's mirrored with Luke stalking through. It's where he's doing his like stealthy and it's, bit. It's playing over the the tannoy as well. Yeah, music in that bit is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, it's good. Just yeah, just I mean, yeah. I mean we've, we've given the music a lot of praise in general, but that's yeah. that was probably one of my favorite it's, bits it's of the show yet. One of the first complaints I had way back in episode one is that I really didn't like the opening title music, uh, and I still stand by that opinion. But I think the actual score has been very good throughout. Mm. So it's been, it's been very good. So yeah, uh, so that was episode eleven of Luke Cage. We have two left. Things are getting exciting. Uh, it's almost time to wait another six months, or whatever it'll be, until Iron Fist. And we'll see. And that's almost kind of scary because it's not like we're getting a season two of something where we know what to expect. So, oh, it's another new thing. Oh. <laughs> we have to get acquainted again with all these new characters and um. so on. Um, I'll be very interested to see. After this, if Misty ends up being someone who appears in multiple things, because I feel like she could, she could, yeah. Especially if, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if at the end of this she accepts a promotion. Because mm. obviously the the I think it was the, the count like the psychiatrist sort of guy last episode was like, oh, you could have been promoted, but you chose to stay here. Yeah, yeah. And she says, oh, because I can do some good here. But maybe once she realizes Luke's here and has this under control. She can go up and help for, on a higher level. I can almost see her almost like becoming the Coulson of the show, and and of the Defenders realm of the universe, just because like she's the authority figure who goes around. And now mm. that she's dealt with Luke, maybe she will go talk to Daredevil. Maybe she will run into Jessica. You saying Coulson reminds me because because someone said way back when the way they called uh, Claire Night Nurse. Ah, yeah, that was a nice touch. That was cool. Yeah, oh, that was a cool little touch. Yeah. yeah, I could see if they're ever actually going to have the defenders in the uh, in the movies, right? Because the mm-hmm. time you think it would be would be Infinity War, right? I feel like if they're going to do that, it, there's a chance they could. And the reason why I say that is because Defenders season one will have happened before the movie, and yeah. they'll know that already because this has been mapped out for ages. And a way you could almost do it, right? Is the, at the end of that season, you know, they have the story of coming together and they save whatever threat there is. For, for that season the the post credit scene almost even though it's not actually a post credit scene because Netflix you can't have post credit scenes because the window goes small you know when yeah. it goes to credits but as you have someone like Coulson come in right and you have you know have him make the little spiel like right we've been aware of your activity you know we have, maybe have him come with Sky right and she can like show her powers and you know that that mm. and the idea that he builds a bridge and just says look the Avengers are dealing with things in the sky they're on the front lines but if something needs to happen on the ground, like a last line of defense, yeah, thing. I know where you are, and that's just that's your one bridge. Because I'm convinced Coulson will be in that movie, and I feel like there'll be a moment oh. when they'll say, "Oh, there's forces, you know, on the ground in New York," and then Coulson will say, "We've got people. It's fine." <laughs> and then and then we can cut to a couple of scenes of them kicking the crap out of whatever alien forces. Yeah, it, it would make sense for them to just 
be called into action. Even if they're not called in, it would make sense for them to just go right. We need to help this time round. Yeah, if we just yeah, even if we just cut to New York and like the stuff's going down and we see them see it happening and then they just jump in. Yeah, because obviously all of these shows have very he- heavily referenced the Avengers and the incident as like a an inciting moment for all of this. Yeah, and while most of these had powers at the time, they weren't. You know, they didn't get involved. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to see if this time, now that they've all kind of taken those steps to actually becoming heroes, which they hadn't before, yeah. seeing them get that, jump in. That's why I'm thinking the idea that the Avengers are up fighting Thanos in the sky or whatever it is, you know, wherever this big front line ha- is happening. Mm. But the forces are also in New York and they realise, look, they're not yeah. coming to save us this time. We need to do this. And, uh, because but, you can tie that in with S.H.I.E.L.D. as well. Like, if it's not just New York, but then have shots of like, shield teams led by inhumans that we know yeah yeah in different like areas. in different cities across the world yeah. or even if it's just focused in new york you, you have our shield team from maintenance of shield roll in start to deal with it they're about to get their asses kicked and then that's when you know luke jumps in front of them and like saves mm. fits or whatever i don't know like yeah, yeah you know there's lots of ways you could do it but i'm just i'm expecting it to happen and i will be disappointed because infinity war is the one chance we have i feel like of having the tv elements kind of tie into yeah, it a little it's, bit because i mean they, they said a while back they had like they said how many people were in it was it, like 68 they? characters on the board i think they said yeah and it was like and we counted them on all the people we know it was like nowhere near yeah and they they joked a couple of months later that they got it down to 67 <laughs> <laughs> who, yeah who got cut i want, I want to know who got cut <laughs> some poor bastard <laughs> I bet it was Turk. <laughs> Poor Turk's not getting in the movie now. <laughs> it's definitely Turk. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, we've got on a bit of a speculation ramble at the end there, but that's episode 11. We'll be back with episode 12 soon. We're almost done. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you thought of this episode in the comments below. Like and subscribe and all that jazz. Keep watching TV. We'll see you next time.